Welcome to this video in our GIMP series. So what we're going to be having a look at is the selection tools. I'm going to show you the basics in this video and then a few of the more advanced tools later on. So here I've just got an image. It's the one we're going to be using in class, but uh, you can of course do this on any image. And we've got a bunch of select tools up here. So you've got the rectangle select, the ellipse, free select or lasso tool as it would be called in Photoshop, fuzzy select or the magic wand as it would be called in Photoshop. This is the select by color. Scissors select, this is a bit like the magnetic lasso in Photoshop and the foreground select tool. So I'm going to show you first of all how we can select things with these first three. So I'm going to call it the rectangle, the ellipse and the lasso tool. So first of all, the rectangle tool, obviously you just draw a rectangle and you get this selection right here. You can change the size of the selection, which is a really nice little innovation and you can uh, as well as changing the size of the selection if you come in the middle of the selection like that you can actually drag the selection around on screen so if it's not in quite the right place you can adjust it the ellipse tool exactly the same but of course it's an ellipse and lastly the lasso tool if I draw a line like this, it just follows my cursor around like that. Or I can drag straight lines and click. And when I click back to the start, it creates a selection. I can also, if I draw part of a shape like this, just press the enter key and it completes the selection for me. Now, the power of the selection tools comes from when we combine them. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to draw a square like this. And ordinarily, if I draw another rectangle, it just replaces the selection. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the shift key. And can you see a little plus has appeared by the cursor? Let go of shift, push shift down. So now I can make another rectangle selection and another rectangle selection like that and all of these things are now in my selection I can also go on to the ellipse tool and hold down the shift key and I can select circles like this I can even go on to the lasso tool and I can select a little random shape like this and it adds it into the selection as well as being able to add to selections I can also take away and for this use the control key at the bottom left hand side of the keyboard so back to the rectangle tool I can deselect a rectangle I'll do a couple so you can see the effect I can do the same with the ellipse tool. So cut that out of there or cut one out of here. And you can see it has that effect. And lastly, with the free select tool as well. So I can actually even just cut a little bit out in the middle like that. So you can see using these three tools that it's possible to make really complicated selections. Now, the reason why we use a selection is so that we can carry out actions on that piece of the picture. So for example, if I switch the brush tool now, and I've got this yellow color here, I've got a large brush tool and if I try and brush on any of the rest of the image, nothing happens. But once I start coloring across where my selection is, you can see it's immediately starting to fill in what I want. So we can 
leave it like that we don't have to fill it all in but it means you can apply effects to various parts of the image i'm going to undo that because that's not what i want so i'm undo all those and the second thing i'm going to show you and there are more things you can do with this the second thing I'm going to show you is moving that. As you'll have noticed, when we're on one of the select tools, actually, generally speaking, it will allow us to move that selection around. And you can um, also force that mode by holding down the Alt key. And it lets you move the selection. But sometimes we want to move what's actually selected. So what we do is this. You go up to the select menu and you click on float. And what this will do is it will create a new floating layer with the selected parts on it. I can then use the move tool to move those parts somewhere else. When I want to actually drop that back onto the image, when I move outside of the selected part with the move tool, you can see a little anchor appears. When I click on the background, there we are. I've moved that part of my selection. Now, of course, we are going to want to do this more sensibly. So for example, I could take the, sorry. I could take a, another selection I could take another selection like of this carrot here there we are and I can either move that by putting it onto a floating layer or I can do edit copy and I can do edit paste and I get a floating layer once again, which I can then move around just like this. And I get a duplicate of the carrot click and it goes away. So that is the basics of selection. I'm gonna be showing you some more advanced tools in the next videos, but I'd like you to give this a go.